Hello and welcome to the SQL tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. Today we're looking at computed columns in SQL Server. So I actually have um, a basic users table here. And from the columns within this table, I can actually derive further information. So with my referral key, I can trim this um, and actually get an employee key. Uh, with my first and last name, I can concatenate the string. And in my last logon, I can separate the date and time parts. So SQL Server Computed Columns allows us to add a new column um, with this exact use case with values derived from other columns. Now, it's important to note computed columns aren't physically stored in the table unless it's marked as persisted. And if we mark it as persisted, um, we can do things like use primary keys, constraints, um, and it avoids calculation overhead at runtime, but it'll have a storage implication. Um, and it needs to be deterministic. So the expression needs to return the same result. Now that would be the case with a string concatenation, but not if we were to query something like a system time. So let's move into SQL Server Management Studio and look at how this works in action. So you can see our basic users table as we covered in the slide before. So let's go about um, looking at the syntax to create computed columns. So we just need to alter table and we need the name of our table. Nice and simple here, it's just users. Um, and we can add that full name column. And I'm just making this, um, generating the expression to do that. So first name and a space and last name. Fine, we could use concat, we won't get into that now. Um, but we see that this uh, completes successfully. And when we select all from users here in this small table, um, we now see our full name present. So we now have a computed column. We haven't marked this as persistence. So it's not gonna physically store on disk, but we'll look at this in the next examples. So we can actually go ahead um, and we can alter the table again users and what we can do here is add the employee key as and we can take the left function and we need the column referral key and then we need to find the specific character that we want to um, trim this by so the underscore and everything to that we can assume is our employee key within our source data so we can then um, mark this as persisted and that's going to physically store. Now we can actually go ahead here and we can add multiple um, computed columns within this one batch. So we've got the log on date and we're just going to convert that to get the date part. We'll mark that as persisted and we can take the log on date again and just take the time part. We're not concerned here about the precision of um, things like nanoseconds, milliseconds. So we can just um, take the time as the hours, minutes and seconds. And then we will again mark that as persisted. So it gives us more, uh, like I said, it's going to reduce query runtime because it's stored physically. Um, it will have an impact on storage, but it also gives us more freedom. Um, to use constraints with this if we need to and build indexes for improved performance if we had um, large tables. So again, we'll um, run that alter table and when we execute the select all from users, we can see our three extra columns are there. Now we have one computed column uh, that's not persisted and three computer columns that are persisted. So they'll be stored um, within our physical memory. Now what we can actually do, if we go into our tables, if you want a quick way to find out, um, and we've got users here, we can go into the design menu, um, select a column, so this one's full name, and you can see that we have an option for is persisted as well as the formula, and that tells us no, um, and the rest should be persisted. So we've got yes and employee key, yes on logon date, and it'll be yes on log on time as well. We mark that as persisted. Now, it's important to note that um, we can generate these computed columns with expressions, but you can't do that with subqueries. So you need to be aware of that. So if we ever wanted to drop these columns, very simple. We uh, alter the table users again, 
and we can simply just list the columns that we want to drop. So that would be full name, employee key, the log on date and the log on time. And there we go, we can execute that and then select all from users and you'll see we return to our base table. So very handy if you want to get past um, wasting some time sort of repeating query steps and typing those out. Um, you just need to remember about the difference between persisted and then you can follow on and look into things like indexing and improvements.